A year later, the next batch included Laurie Mithen, Big Bob Johnson, whose father had played in the 20s, Ian Tiger Ridley and Brian Dixon. I started in, what, 1954 and broke down in 1961. So I didn't have a lot of opportunity. Um, but I was a very fortunate person to be able to be part of such a great group of players, led by, of course, uh, Norm Smith, who was just the man. In all the games that I played in, it was never would we win or would we lose, it was how much will we win by. John Beckwith, the dapper and highly efficient back pocket specialist, would take over as captain from McMahon. Just at that time, that probably John Beckwith was probably the best player that the club had and, uh, and that often uh, was the reason why um, captains were picked because they were the best player. One of, if not the most determined person that I've ever met, whether it was on a football field or off the football field, like after a game of footy in our day, you'd play a game of table tennis. Well, Barassi just would not be beaten and, and he would work and work and work uh, until he won. And the same on a football field. I don't think that Ron had the greatest... Uh, I don't think he had the abilities of a Robert Flower. But he was a very, very, very determined man uh, to succeed at what he was doing. He just wanted to win. And we, we, we jumped them and we went on with the game. And now you can watch closely as Melbourne's diminutive rover, Ian Ridley, is floored by Collingwood's Bill Sarong. Bill Sarong fixed me right up, but uh, thinking back on that, um, I think it was our own fault. It was probably the best side we had, actually, 58. In 1971, his trusty assistant, Ian Ridley, would take over and the results would be impressive. In his first season, he would be named Coach of the Year. Uh, he was a great orator and he'd, he'd be able to tell a, a real sort of picture of uh, how he'd want you to play. I remember one, one time he'd, he talked about uh, a rose and how the petals and the petals made the rose stand up and um, the rose uh, as a blossom lost the petals and you know it keep, kept on growing growing and um, you know it, it just really sent shivers down my spine. Our teamwork's just fallen away um, I know that we have had injuries that's an excuse uh, wet weather is another excuse but purely and simply, I think, Peter, that uh, our confidence is down at the moment, our teamwork is missing, and uh, this is what we've got to get back. If we can get it back, we've still got a good chance. And then the In one of the biggest footy coups of the year, Melbourne spent in excess of $15,000 to acquire South Australian star John Tilbrook, soon to be nicknamed Diamond Jim. He made his debut against South Melbourne in round 12. He's kicked the thing about 150 and he kicked two goals that day, which would both kicks would be as long as I've ever seen. And I thought, oh, what do we got here? And John didn't quite go on, but he still wasn't a bad footballer. In mid-1973, Ridley took the punt and blooded a skinny youngster named Robert Flower. He would become the longest serving player in the club's history. Taking into account poise, ability, skill, uh, marking, kicking, handballing, it doesn't matter what you refer to, but Robert Flower is the greatest footballer that I have seen in my life. In September 1996 at the Dallas Brooks Hall, emotions overflowed and friendships were shattered as the Demons voted under Chairman Ian Ridley to merge with Hawthorne. The Melbourne Hawks vote proved football is a religion in Victoria. Ridley and his disciples exercising the demon from 52% of the members. All you board members that had the bloody courage to recommend this, get on your feet! 